So I've got those uh, new ends printing. I decided to do a little bit more now. I think we can move a little bit further with the extruder, at least get rid of the parts that we don't need anymore. If there are some, I think there are. And just keep disassembling until we're ready to reassemble with the new parts tomorrow. Starting to really get along with uh, pulling this extruder apart now. Just a couple more bits to go. The stepper motor and the 3D hot end and cold end are still in there. But other than that, all seems to be pretty much there. I've got the uh, thermistor out and that has the little connector part way down the cable. So we'll be replacing that with the uh, fully soldered one. I mean, although soldered is not ideal, I think it's better than having a connector in a place that's really irritating and therefore gets caught. So. Yep, nearly there, nearly pulled it apart, and then we can uh, start with uh, putting it all back together in a slightly more usable fashion. Right, so as you can see, the extruder well, it's pretty much now gone. We've just got this. So we're ready to basically build everything back up. Everything's now dismantled into its respective parts and we just gotta put it all back together in the right way. One thing I have noticed is that this fan is 12 volts and the other fan is 12 volts, but the one that I've got as an upgrade is only five volts. So that's gonna be a bit interesting. I'm not sure quite what to do about that. I'm not sure if we can change the firmware to only output five volts or what. But I think we might have grabbed the wrong fan. Either way, we shall push on and we'll just have to change the fan at the end if it's not quite right. Okay, so it's the next day and we got some new prints off the printer. This is the X motor end and the X idler end. These are the, uh, the bare upgrade, ext well, X axis extruder parts because it's kind of all in one bundle. It's just these two bits though. And then we also need this bit, which is kind of a tensioner for the X axis. So in order to use this specific part, you need an, a three millimeter dowel pin. So I didn't have one, so I made one. So what I did was take a, uh, like an M3 by 40 screw, which doesn't have a thread that goes all the way. It, the thread's only for about half of it. So there's a part of the screw which is exactly, pretty much exactly three millimeters. So I used a little junior hacksaw, cut it off, cut the thread off one end, cut the head off the other end, leaving me with a small dowel pin. So that should fit perfectly. Uh, in fact, it does fit really well, nice and perfectly into this thing. And then I believe we just use the standard uh, idler and we'll be good to go. So. Let's get on with some actual more building now that we've got the right parts to do the job. Oh, and one more thing, the LCD screen part is reprinting at the moment. You probably can't hear it, but it is just there. So within about, I think it's got like an hour left, we'll have hopefully all the parts actually done properly. So let's carry on with the build.
So assembly is going pretty well. We've got the uh, idler end with the adjustable idler, which seems really, really nice. I like that. The clamped bearings, so they fit really nicely. I did remember to do the little um, kind of 22 and a half degree offset, wherever, 45 degree offset. So that's done. We've got the motor end done, the sensor on the bottom. This is really oily because I tested that on here. Uh, yeah, sensor on, motor on, again, bearings in, uh, lead screw thing on. This is again, nice and loose because we want to tighten that down once it's on the printer and not before. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out. They feel really solid and they are going to produce some nice prints, I think. So the next thing we're going to do is use this and this and this and this and this and we're going to assemble the extruder. Now, having done this, I'm really tempted to try and do a bare extruder, but I think for now, we're just going to stick with the parts we've already printed because I don't have time to wait for a load more parts. So we're just going to get kick-started with the standard Mark III, well, Mark two and a half, if you like, extruder. Let's do that. So as it turns out, these kind of extruder parts are not the easiest to print. So this, I was supposed to have really these all in black because I think it will affect the IR sensor if it's in blue. So I had printed them all in black and I hope that would have gone well first time. However, upon putting the shaft in for the Bontech gear, I, I broke this piece and now it's not gonna be functional. So I've got a blue one, so I'm gonna use a blue one for now. I might just need to, I think, if I remember correctly, it's fairly easy to move because there's just one screw and you can take out that piece after you've uh, assembled it. So I'll assemble it all with that, then print a black one, and then we'll try again. I might just disable the IR sensor while I do that, just in case it starts to go a little bit haywire. Anyway, time to just continue on with this extruder. I'm gonna have to take these nuts out of here as well, so I'll probably have to totally hack this piece apart. So assembly of the extruder is coming on fairly nicely. The only downside is I didn't really anticipate how many M3 square nuts I would need. I, it seems like there's more required than what I actually have. Well, I've not reached that point yet, but I haven't finished yet and I seem to be quickly running out of square M3 nuts. For some reason, they're really difficult to get hold of, so it's like the only thing I don't have hundreds of. So. It's a bit of a pain, but we're getting there and hopefully I'll be able to find, I've got this like scrap part of uh, screws and stuff that I keep around. Whenever I can't be bothered to organize stuff back into the correct place, it goes in that bin of stuff. So hopefully there's some M3 square nuts in there that I'll be able to salvage as we go through the build. Other than that, coming along fairly nicely, I think at the moment. So immediately after filming that segment, I had to start preparing this and it needs an M3 square nut. There was not one in that little yellow box and I couldn't find one anywhere. However, what I did eventually find is this, a small bag of square M3 nuts. So there's like 15 or something in there. That should be enough to finish the build. Hooray, super success. Right, let's carry on. So I've just got to the part where it um, asks you to assemble the Noctua fan. 
And it does look like from the image online that the 5-volt one is in fact the same for this as it was for the Mark III, which is strange. But, I mean, that's what we've got, so that's what we're going to go with. Right, so extruder is very nearly done. We got the bulk of it kind of there, just the cooling duct, cooling duct and fan to go on, and then we're pretty much good to go, I think. Uh, however, I'm just about to go off for a curry for lunch, so I'm going to do that, and I shall see you in a bit. So that's it from me today on the Mark II S upgrade build. In the next episode, things go from bad to. Uh, a little bit even more bad. Progress on the extruder comes to a bit of a halt and I start to have a little bit of a go at the y-axis assembly instead. For now, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. There'll be a link in the description. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes and stuff like that and I will see you in the next one.